I've never been to Morocco, I've never been to Africa. So this was a very exciting invitation to get. And uh, it's just amazing to, to see a modern city that is embedded in an ancient one, really. I mean, there's so much antiquity in your everyday life um, that it's a striking contrast. I mean, I've never really experienced it to this degree. I mean, you know, you, you see that contrast to some extent in in European cities, but this is this is greater and more unusual for me. So it's exciting. Well, he's um, he's probably the character I'm best known for having created, and um, the interesting thing about him is that he was originally going to be a minor character in the movie. He was just going to be in the first sequence of the film, and. Uh, that was the first piece of animation that they completed. And so they used it as a trailer. And it was the first time anybody saw Ice Age. And what they saw was this scrat chasing a nut and creating this cataclysm. People loved that trailer. It was kind of a miracle. What was interesting, because there were no words, it was like a silent movie um, with sound effects. But it was, you know, no dialogue. And, uh, and it did everything that you want a trailer to do. It got people excited about this movie and they really wanted to see it. The thing was, they wanted to see a movie with this guy in it. And at that point, the plan, they had no plans to have him in the rest of the film. So they had to write him in to the rest of the film. So if you notice, he doesn't interact with any of the other characters. He has his own separate movie going on, and it looks like a work of genius, but it's actually because they hadn't planned on having him in there. So that's how that separate story came about. You know, I, I, a couple of people have asked me this today, and I always say that um, I understand why he's so popular. I like him a lot, too, but my favorite has always been Sid. Sid, okay. Sid yeah, at least in the Ice Age franchise, because he's the first one I saw animated. And um, he was, I think, an unusual design. I was very pleased that we went with that design. And when I finally saw him move and animate, it was just, it was really exciting. It was one of the most exciting moments for me in animation, from, from my experience in it. My favorite drawing in this whole place? That's, that's tough. But, but I will say that, um, that, you know what? I have favorites for different reasons. So I like this one a lot because um, I just like the design of it, but I, also, but I also like that there's a lot going on in his brain. You know that he's thinking about his choices. Do I really want to be a vegetarian? Really? Because he looks delicious. And uh, I don't know, I, I was a vegetarian for eight years, and I think I felt like him every day. So it was personal, and so that, you know, for those reasons, and also because I just like the way it turned out, that's, that's one of my favorites. And that's my friend, that's, mm -hmm. it's perfect. The other's not so good, but, and that, that's my wife, that looks like her. But um, we shared a house one summer for a week, mm -hmm. and um, he and I had to cook dinner one night. We were told, we, we had to handle dinner. Mm -hmm. So we bought lobsters. And you know, when you cook them, they have to be alive. You have to drop them into the water, which we did, which was really, really hard. It was really hard to do. But the worst part was that we didn't cook them long enough. So when we actually had them on the plate and we opened them, they weren't finished. So we couldn't really eat them. So we just felt awful because we murdered them for, for no reason. Um, that actually would have been a good reason to go back to being a vegetarian. But um, no, I still eat meat. But I don't think I've had lobster since. When I did it, I thought, this is a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I think I've got a good one. And I submitted it to The New Yorker. But since then, it's clearly, I, I sell prints from my website. And it's clearly one of my most popular drawings. So I feel vindicated to some degree because even though the New Yorker didn't take it, everybody else likes it. Tremendous grief and anger. <laughs>
it's true. Exactly. It's true to a certain degree. No, I have to be cool about it. I have to be, oh yeah, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. But um, no, sometimes it's sometimes I look back on it and I think, no, they made the right choice. It really wasn't ready. But there are others that um, that I'm that I still think were good ideas that uh, that that they made a mistake. And most frustrating is when I see what they do publish, and I don't like it. You know, you see covers that like, why, why this, why this doesn't say anything. It stinks. So it's a combination of feelings. <laughs>